Avi Bozo from Syria, thank you very much for your time. I'm very happy to see you. First of all, if you can introduce yourself. Avi Bozo from Syria, thank Avi Bozo from Syria, thank you very much for your time. I'm very happy to see you. First of all, if you can introduce yourself. First of all, thank you for having me, Roy. I'm glad we're doing this. My name is Havi Buzo. I am the co-founder and the host of The Yellow Show. I'm a broadcast journalist. I have over a decade and some uh, experience as a broadcast journalist, TV host, uh, radio host, and I was born and raised in Damascus, Syria. Um, my mom was born in Aleppo, so I spent a lot of my childhood going to Aleppo. And uh, I did talk about this recently. My mom was born and raised in the Jewish quarter in Aleppo, even though her wow. family is Muslim. Um, so, you know, I grew up understanding and learning about things that were not taught generally um, in the Middle East and Arab countries. I want to ask you about your media platform, Yala, if you can explain to us. I actually started doing my own initiatives because I realized that this is what I need to do is to start working on educating the public about Israel, uh, sharing narratives that are not usually shared in Arabic language media about Israel, about the Jewish people, about Israel's history in the region. You know, Yala is a show about hope. And it's showcasing uh, the history of Israel, celebrating um, different aspects about Israeli art and innovation alongside Arab countries and the countries that are actually partners with Israel now in peace uh, after the Abraham Accords. So we're celebrating the region. We're, we're showcasing a future where people could coexist and work together and have a bright, prosperous, stable future. But basically, um, after October 7th, we decided that we need to do more of the educational part and tell those untold stories. So now we have both. We are still yalla about the good news, but we're also yalla about the current developing news and mm -hmm. the educational side. And that's what we're doing right now. You know, Heavy, it's more complicated after the 7th October. There was a lot of either, you know, celebrating, right? Um, and then there is the denying. And a lot of people probably were trying to deny because they don't want to face the reality about how monstrous a, a group like Hamas is. So we started, my co-founder immediately went to Israel and we started showcasing and telling stories that you will not see on Arab media. And quite frankly, um, Roy, you don't see it in Western media as much either. So we started showcasing um, stories from uh, survivors and also victims of the attacks and the, the, about the hostages. We showcased um, Arab victims who were Arab Muslim Israelis who were also either kidnapped or murdered uh, by Hamas terrorists. Um, those things you don't see and you do yeah. not see specifically in the Arabic language media. So we start showing these stories. And until now, I do hear a lot of feedback about just people were like, really? Like, they just kind of were baffled, did not know. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to tell them about all of these different stories um, where others are trying to either deny or showcase as some sort of victory. Heavy, what do you like to say to people who criticize you because your focus on 7th October and not in the war in Gaza. We interviewed a Palestinian activist. Her name is Manar Sharif. She lived in Gaza. She witnessed Hamas and how, what they do to the Palestinians in Gaza and all of the abuses and human rights violations that continue to happen, but the world doesn't show. We showcased that. We talked about that. So, and you never see somebody like Menar on an Arabic TV station, for example. So we're given a platform and we had a number of similar interviews. So we gave a platform to voices that are just marginalized mm -hmm. in the Arabic language media, um, including Palestinians. And, and that's the value of Yalla. We are bringing to light the voices that have been long pushed aside and silenced because mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear the truth about what is a group like Hamas? What do they do? How do they abuse? How do they steal the aid? How do they murder? 
and torture other Palestinians. You know, nobody in the Arabic language media wants to talk about that. So we're breaking that taboo. It sounds very risky to tell these things. And I wonder, Heavy, do you get threats? I think now we're just getting more people like actually either uh, appraising what we are doing or mm. but just being interested, being surprised. We get messages like that as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't uh, see threats. Um, thank God. <laughs> But, you know, I definitely know that this is what we're doing is something that upsets and uh, threatens um, these forces that want mm -hmm. to continue, um, uh, you know, on a path of radicalization, destruction and um, terrorism. You know, that's how they want to run the Middle East and North Africa. And that's what we're trying to prevent. And we want to stop. The only way to stop it is through media and education. And now it's not easy at all. Because now it seems that all the world is against Israel. You know, that made what we're doing even more important. And the fact that we have everything in Arabic and in English makes it even more important. It baffles me, Roy. It baffles me. It, it shocks me that people here in the West would actually defend a terrorist organization like Hamas. I cannot even believe that they would even, but it, it's it's that like complete disconnect from reality when somebody who had lived and had the privilege of being born and raised under a democratic country that has a rule of law, that has uh, human rights, you know, and then they're just completely unknowingly are defending something that does exactly the opposite, that represents exactly the opposite. You know, the only path forward for the people in the Middle East is peace. There's no other path. Finally, Heavy, I want to ask you, what is your message to the people here in Israel? I just want to say that there's a hopeful future that, um, you know, stay hopeful, stay positive and uh, speak out and show your yourself and talk about your history and uh, don't ever go low don't ever go low to the level of uh, people who are trying to dehumanize the jewish people don't dehumanize back i want to just salute uh the israeli government and the knesset for banning al jazeera it is time to um, not allow for literally TV stations who their sole purpose is to radicalize, dehumanize, uh, and incite violence um, and anti-Semitism and hate for mm -hmm. these channels to not be allowed to operate freely. You know, this is a major problem that we've been having in the Middle East and this very important step by Israel to ban Al Jazeera is something I could not tell you how important and how crucial this is. And I just really hope that other countries around the world follow suit. Heavy Bozo from Syria, thank you very much for this interview. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, Roy. I'm glad we did this.